the 2022 season is truly underway. So let's take a look back at the top 10 climbing performances so far in the spring this year. As always, these rankings are subjective. They're based on a watts per kilo, times duration curve, altitude, how hard the race was beforehand. But still, it's our choices of the top 10. This originated in an article. If you want to see all the data in full on lanternrouge.com.au, written by Carlos Ozzels, link down below. Some honorable mentions at Catalonia, a few of them. Lucas Plapp, the unseen performance, 6.6 watts per kilo apparently for 25 minutes on the stage to launch Carapaz and Agita. One of the best performances of the year, but it came right at the start. So he did it basically like a TT. Ben O'Connor, 6.1 for like 20 minutes on La Molina to win that stage. The next day, up to over 2,000 meters, Almeida on Boy like 5.8 watts per kilo, won the stage ahead of Quintana and Aguita. Enemy in Bessege on Mont Bouquet, seems like a lifetime ago, beat Jay Vine 6.6 for 13 and a half minutes. Ivan Sosa in Gran Camino, riding for Valverde. Avenapol, first stage of Algarve on Paina, and as well, Aguita, 7 for 7 on Malau to win that stage, newly joined at Bora Hansgrohe. But now onto the real top 10, Jan Hirt, the unassuming Czech climber on Intermarche who came into the season firing the whole squad. They just won Gen Wevelgem with Biniam Germay. Well, this was at Tour of Oman on the Green Mountain Climb, where I think Froome's won before, Rafael Viles has the record. They lit up this climb 6.35 watts per kilo for nearly 20 minutes. They were attacking Masnada, who was wearing the leader's jersey for quick step. But the key was really the last eight minutes of this climb, where after Jan Hirt had attacked, he had Vokala and Jezbe of Arkea on his wheel, who both have been looking really good this year, particularly Vokala. He did 7 watts per kilo for 8 minutes. You might not have caught this result. Well, actually, the video of recapping it went viral. And put 1 minute 50 into Masnada in 2 kilometers. It's really steep at this point on Green Mountain. Now, Ren Tarmai, who also launched Jan Hirt here, he's back in Rwanda training at altitude. Hirt's always training at altitude. Look for one of those two. Probably Taramay, who won a stage at the Vuelta up to Picon Blanco last year to take a big mountain stage in a World Tour race this year. But this was Jan Hirt sealing GC, basically, even though there were attacks in later stages to come. It also, for Intermarche, if you've not been following the lanternrouge.com.au articles from Raul Bancari, fortnightly was a big contributor to Intermarche's point success. They're pretty much safe from the relegation battle, and it's thanks to these sort of performances from Jan Hert. Number nine, 6.4 watts per kilo for nearly 19 minutes. Volta of Valencia, the controversial gravel, is it too much gravel stage? Vlasov, great performance, dropping Avon Apollo, hard cracking him, once again showing he's very good on the steep stuff as long as it's below 20 minutes. He's continued to struggle with over 20 minute climbs this year as we saw in Paris-Nice cracking on Torini compared to his Von 2 performance in 2020 at Astana was outstanding. He looked good again at GP in Dorain on the short hilly stuff. Can't wait to see how he goes in Basque Country, which is raced as we speak. Number eight, UAE Tour, the Queen stage up to Jebel Hafeet. They have it every year. Pagatra in the lead on GC. UAE controlling much of this climb. They had the numbers, Almeida, Micah, and Pagatra against Adam Yates, who did 6.33 watts per kilo for about 26 minutes. It was hot conditions, but it's always really, really easy before this climb. It's a unique sort of power profile required before the climb compared to a traditional European stage. Despite Pagacha winning the stage, Yates still did more watts per kilo because Pagacha was in his draft when Yates was attacking. Yates was only able to drop him when he did about 6.5 for the same climb back in 2020. And this is another one you might not have seen. Brandon McNulty, not his Paris-Nice stage win, which was impressive as well. This was at Fawn Ardèche, a semi-classic where Roglic and Jonas was there on a 6K, 7.5% climb. For 16 minutes, McNulty did 6.5 watts per kilo, which was in in the middle of like an incredible 45 minute solo performance incredibly strong february and march from brandon mcnulty number six tour de la provence it always delivers 
narrow man on the Montagne de Lure climb, not Charlie Renard this year, a different climb to Montagne de Lure. 13 kilometers, about 6.5%. Bruno Armirel, who's been incredible early this year for FDJ, was pacing earlier, but then with from about 4.5Ks to go, the pace really got lifted by Quintana. We don't know the exact what's per kilo in the last four kilometers, kind of like in his cold airs performance, it's hard to estimate back in 2020, which is pure mutant stuff, but Alaphilippe, bravely, if not foolishly, tried to keep Naira Man's wheel and then on the second dig had to let it go. Naira doing over 6.05 watts per kilo for 32 minutes on Montagne de Lure. And he's held this form for a long time, Quintana. Paris-Nice, Tour de Zalp, Maritime du Var, Tour de la Provence. He's been at a similar level for all those races. The difference is the climbing competition on Torini and Paris-Nice, Simon Yates, Martinez, Adam Yates, Roglic, it's different to who he was up against here in Tour de la Provence, so he wasn't actually worse on Torini, but he has taken an incredible amount of points as well for Arkea, one of the top riders, maybe in top five in the UCI points, took the stage and the GC there, and he was back for number five, Tour de Zalp Maritime Eduvar, the short cold airs climb, which he did Unbelievable numbers, I don't know which side, back in 2020. This was stage two, is a false flat descent finish, 6.8 watts per kilo for 14 minutes. It required Tim Wellens to do his, I think, best ever 20-minute absolute power, his season best 10-minute power, Guillaume Martin, another Frenchman trying to hold Naira Quintana's wheel, would live to regret it. Problem for Naira here was this was not a mountaintop finish. He would have his revenge the next day, despite Wellen's career best being good enough to chase Quintana down here. And this wouldn't be the last we'd actually see of Quintana on cold airs this season, with it being included, I think, from a different side in Paris-Nice Stage 8. But here's Quintana's numbers, including this year compared to his career best. The Queen Stage of Paris-Nice takes up fourth position on this list, up to Col de Torini, about a 40-minute climb. I think Bernal and Martinez might have had the record before this stage. And it was Ineos with Yates, with Martinez, trying to work over Roglic in attacking one by one. Well, really, it was just Yates attacked. Roglic closed him down. Then Roglic attacked with six Ks to go, and Martinez marked him and then worked with him because they dropped Quintana and Simon Yates. And I wonder if this was paced harder, if Roglic went again and didn't trust his sprint, could he have gone quicker? They stalled in the sort of last two kilometers of this climb. They did... 5.75 watts per kilo for at least a five minute period when they'd all come together and attacked each other. The normalized was probably a bit higher, but the overall climb, they did about 39 minutes 45 at 6.05 watts per kilo, or Roglic did anyway. And after those attacks, he basically trusted his sprint, which never a bad option and absolutely torched everybody. So a good performance from Roglic, better than on Le Colmien last year. There was a higher pace this year, higher level climbers here in Paris Nice on the Queen stage. And Roglic would have been appreciative of those six bonus seconds on Yates, plus some time on the road in the next stage, which we'll see later. But third overall, most of you probably haven't seen this, Gran Camino Stage 2 de Mirador de Azaro, 7.7 watts per kilo for seven minutes. Not the hardest stage beforehand. It was Israel Premier Tech here, probably the highlight of the season so far, and what's been a bad season. Uh, Derek G, Canadian guy from the dev team, he was really good in this race, actually, uh, working for Mike Woods, this was an incredibly steep climb, like so, so steep, perfect for Woods. He was out of the saddle for almost six or seven minutes straight. When Serrano tried to bait him and attacked, he just counted off that, dropped Sosa, dropped Valverde, and this was a stage that Movistar were riding for Valverde here. And as I said, Woods did 7.7 .7 watts per kilo for seven minutes. It was the, It's the perfect finish for Woods. Murder we at Flesh for Alone isn't actually long enough or steep enough for him and he put a lot of time into Valverde on this stage an incredibly good performance from Woods taking out the third spot but second Tadej Pogacar Monte Carpeña the climb of Pantani 6k's 10% pretty hard stage beforehand as well they did two reps of this climb 6.5 watts per kilo for 19 minutes 29 Lander had tried to increase the pace and attack him and then Pagacha went clear it wasn't a mountaintop finish there was the very technical descent afterwards and it was numbers that we've come to expect from Pagacha 6.5 for that duration you can see on Paris Sud in 2020 or Col de Rom, he's done similar numbers on the same curve. Just another great performance from Pagacha, particularly in the cold conditions, which he seems to enjoy. But number one, Paris Nice, last stage, always delivers. 
Valdez. Six kilometers at 7.83%. It was extremely hard before this climb. It's not a mountaintop finish. It's not even a mountain, really. It's just over 15 minutes this climb. Yumbo Visma had made the stage quite hard beforehand and then when they got to the penultimate climb the Cote de Pays 6.6k is about 7% Ineos lit it up with Freyla they then had Juan van Aert closing the move or the attack rather of Martinez or Primoz Roglic who was in the leader's jersey Simon Yates who tried to attack multiple times was distanced initially on Torini the, the stage before was sitting in the wheels the whole time waiting for the last cold as climb and yeah this has taken out number one spot not because like Lucas Plapp's power on the sort of watts per kilo curve and duration is technically better than Simon Yates' performance. But that, as I said, it came at the start of the stage. Great performance, of course. It split the race completely apart and won GC for Aguita and the stage for Carapaz. But this was at the back end of an incredibly hard week of racing at Paris Nice, an incredibly hard stage in cold conditions. And then the weather was changing. And then when they got to the cold airs, after Wout Bernard had been pacing really hard and Quintana attacked, Yates looked at Roglic there, waited for this steep section as they went through this sort of suburban area and just clipped off with 4Ks to go. They had a headwind at the top of this climb when it was less steep and when Wout van Aert was... That's why I think Wout van Aert was so pivotal and important on this stage for Roglic. Like, yes, he struggled on this 14% section, but it levels off here and with that headwind... Roglic being able to sit behind Wout, and he just was able to keep that gap at 20, 22 seconds to Simon Yates, who was absolutely motoring. It's one of those Simon Yates performances which he can pull out of the bag, which his problem is really consistency. He can't do this all the time. But when you see the numbers Yates was doing, this wasn't like a Roglic having a really terrible moment compared to Yates. Roglic, okay, maybe not his peak numbers necessarily on this cold as climb but he was still doing pretty good numbers they'd still dropped Quintana and it was Wout van Aert who was also doing un an unbelievable performance on cold airs. but let me know what you think of the list down below or comment on the article rather there's more sort of statistics and justifications of all the positions and descriptions of what happened in the stages in that article but yeah Simon Yates well, I don't realize but Tour of the Alps had some really good climbing performances last year before this year at Italia he went into co-favoritism with Bernal will that happen again this year and maybe he underperforms at the Giro where one day he's dropped on Zonkalan and the next day he's dropping Bernal on Segura Alla we'll wait and see but that was the top 10 climbing performances of the early season hope you enjoyed the video I'll do another update maybe before the Tour de France when Dauphiné and the Giro d'Italia is over and until then ciao